Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP0 campaign where we race into space uh, against these fine competitors. So... Um, let's see what's next. What's next, what's next, what's next? So we have a geostationary launch. Um, and then we have a test for a superlunar flight in which I am a monster. And then that R&D facility needs to get finished so we can unlock some more nodes because I want to unlock some more nodes. Um, so yeah, let's fly the geostationary launch, I guess. Um, oh, also we can start designing things with hydrolocks. How much do I care about solids? Um, how much do I care about solids? Well, solids are useful because they don't take ullage. But, um, and they have short burn times, and they're cheap. But now that we have the 1 kilonewton thrusters, which become like 2.4 kilonewton thrusters with bipropellant, um, not sure that's really needed. So I think I'm going to prioritize electrics. for now. Um, right. No, basic solids includes the caster. Uh, and that actually is fairly important, but because we're basically, because of the way this campaign is structured, because it's a race to milestones, I don't have to worry so much about low-end launch vehicles where I would strap on solids. It's basically, I'm going to be worrying about these really large things. Um, like this, where we really don't have to worry about strapping on solids that much. Um, the advantage of solids in real life are essentially twofold. The first advantage of a solid is that you can strap it onto an existing launch vehicle and get some improvement uh, because it's very hard to redesign a launch vehicle. Here we have no such, no such issue with redesigning a launch vehicle. If we don't have enough liftoff thrust, we can just make the core bigger, stick another engine on the bottom, there we go. Uh, the other main advantage solids have is that they are not complex systems in the way that a highly complex liquid propellant engine is, and therefore the launch cost of something with solids is quite cheap, uh, although the manufacturing cost may not necessarily be cheap. That is also tragically not modeled, because we don't separately model launch costs. So yeah, there's not as much point for solids as one might like. So that's why I'm deciding that I maybe won't bother with solids for so much. All right, so now we have this vehicle. Um, let's check out Delta Avionics are good for 10 tons. We could either pack two of them, 160 kilograms each, so 320. The Centaur ring. All right, that's cool. Let's just spend the cash and get that because that's going to be useful. Um, and that's actually useful enough that we could materially save tonnage here as well. Uh, technically Oh, but it's ugly. Oh well. 
We can't hide it the way we hide the other things. Uh, can we hide it? Probably not. No, it's outside the... Dang. Very well. Oops, that was not intended. Uh, how long is that burn time? Five minutes? Whoa, that's a big dome. I don't think we want that big a dome. I guess we broadly want that big a dome. Okay. That's a big old tank dome. Um. Okay. Yeah, um, that looks a little wider than three meters. Pap, we are developing a new launch vehicle that's going to use some equivalent of a Centaur. Um, Nakarani, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you have another ready. Um... Okay, so let's build ourselves a happy little centaur. Um, where's my list of dog breeds? All dog breeds. Uh, no, that's cats. Uh, hmm. Ah. This becomes the Dalmatian. That that one engine thing is the corgi. Of course it is. And this broadly replaces the bulldog. Uh Okay. So now let's build ourselves a happy little centaur. Three meters. Oh, right. Of course, because this this is of course wider than three meters because it's three point oh four eight meters. Because it's ten feet. But I've been using metric for my stage diameters. Although interestingly, I did use the proper fifteen foot there. So maybe we should use fifteen. We could use the full ten foot here. There, that looks better. Uh, shrink it a little, however. Okay. There we are. Now, let's take this off so we can see what we're doing. Um, this goes up to... Ah, we're actually going <laughs> to quite exactly clone this. Ah, <laughs> uh, except we need the... That goes away. This goes away. 
Oh, no, I did not want to take that away. I'm going to need them. Um, I'm just going to need them placed oppositely. Uh, this goes up to 3.048. Well, 3.5. This gets tossed. Um, Oops. There's the avionics unit. So this, this, this goes up. That dome is not as high as it might be. That's okay. Um, I wish there was a curve in way, a curve between round one and round three. That would be nice. Something more like, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think we get to make it even longer. Um, let's haul this up. There. That's about right. That's quite a dome. Oops. Okay. And about like that. That'll do. Um, I don't think we need stronger attitude jets. I think we'll be okay with the attitude jets that we have. Now we need to get some RL-10s. Oh, this is going to be painfully expensive, isn't it? RD... RL-10. There's a pretty RL-10. Sixty million dollars. Glad we saved up a lot of money. Oh, this is SSTU, so I could just put, like, a double mount on this. But I don't like the... I don't like the S4B mount. It looks sort of ugly. Uh, we could try a skeletal thing. Oh, that's like the tank dome and... Eh. We'll just make it ourselves. Don't cur. All right. So we need two of these puppies. That's the extended nozzle version. That's not an well. We don't really have an RL ten A one, so this is what it will have to be. Oh, we can't offset. All right. Now we can offset far enough down. So that's okay. We'll offset inward slightly, and yeah, it'd be nice if we could go even further down, but we can't seem to. Whoops, whoa, that was weird. Uh-oh. Put that tank back. Okay. And make it a little more shallow. Alright. Now let's see, what is their rated burn time? Their rated burn time is 7 minutes and 10 seconds. Okay. I think I'm not going to make this a balloon stage. Uh, like I just said, the all the, the, the 
butts that SSTU has, I don't really like. They look kind of ugly uh, in in my eye. Or they're they're fit they're fitting for for like they they look so obviously the S4 and the uh, the S the S4B and the S2. Uh, Pap says you can. Ah, uh, yes, excellent. Thank you, Pap. Now we can finally direct this, and now we can make this bulgy again. Properly bulgy. There. That looks good. Oh, this is going to be a pretty stage. Uh, like I said, we're not making this um, balloon. But we are going to pretend it's a common bulkhead stage. Because it is. Um, and... That's interesting. Why? Uh, four minutes and twenty-three seconds. Really? Oh, what configure these on? These are on. Oh, I can actually. I can just jump straight. I'm going to be so. I like Pep's new tree so much because we won't have this stupidity, where there are three configs in a single node. There's literally no reason not to just use this. So we might as well jump straight to the Centaur E. A D E? A E. This is the D, this is the C, I think. Or maybe that's the A B. I forgot. Um, anyway. Yeah, but this has appreciably higher specific impulse. Yeah, almost 20 seconds higher. I'm going to enjoy playing on that new tree. Um, yeah, this is going to this is going to be what we'll do the sample return. Cuz the power of Hydrolux. And man, we're going to need a large stage here to get... Um... Even at 100 utilization, 100% 100 utilization, it's not. That's weird, man. Seven minute fifty. Yeah, this is going to end up, I think, taller than expected. You know what? Let's try that. That'll work better. Uh, we just have to do that. All right. And what if we went to round three for this as well? That works. That works acceptably to me. Uh, that tank is <laughs> sort of. All right. Yeah, that works. Okay. Now we're almost there. All right. So we're going to apportion to there because we're going to overload this a bit with hydrogen because of the boil off. Um I think we want to over-provision only about that much. So let's see what it is for 7 minutes and 50 seconds. What is the LOX value here? 7963.6 Okay. OK. 
Okay. What would be the appropriate value for this? Uh, 7963.6 over 0.2369 times 76.7631 is 25652. All right. So we're getting 7662. All right, so we're losing 60 meters per second from that. Although, uh, the first thing we're going to do is make what's above us much, much heavier. Oops, wrong one. I think that's more reasonable. Um, and now let's check. 25,652. Well, we'll go with 3, because it's around. 4,335 versus... All right, so we lose 15 meters per second from excess hydrogen provisioning, but it'll boil off by the time we go. With the with the A33, you're right that it is now the correct nozzle, I think. I think this is... Yeah, because the A4 had the carbon extension. So, yeah. Yep. All good. Um, I have to see if somebody has a model of an, of an A31 or, or an A1. Um, right. Now let's put the rest of the LV under it and see what happens. Oh, also, I need to... These need to be service module. Hydrazine. And rather larger. Do I want... You know what, let's just replace the RCS with... better RCS. Uh, this should be sufficient. We don't have three-way RCS, so I'm just going to use this. And we'll put it on hydrazine TL2. Okay, don't like the actual Centaur. There's not much point in going to bipropellant RCS for this. Uh, and we'll put the hydrazine bottles down there. You know, that's stupid looking like that. Now we need to extend this a little bit more to get back up to 50. Okay, that is a long stage. I forget I always forget how long Centaur actually is. It's much longer than you think it is. Hey, Kindle Egg. Um, okay, now let's put this on. Oh, that's fun. We've got to avoid all these things. Let's go 1x symmetry.
All right, that will do. Now, top will also be 3.05, except we're going to cheat ever so slightly such that we don't have colliders here. There we go. These need to come down to here and pitch outwards so that they're not stuck in the fairing. All right, this is now a fairly tall launch vehicle. It went from being a relatively normally proportioned launch vehicle to quite a tall one, but that's okay. Um, and I think what we wanted to do also is decrease this down to four minutes or possibly consider putting two LR-105s in, but I think we actually just want to decrease it to four minutes. Oh, fun. It's that bug again. Great. I love that bug. <laughs> we got to reopen it so the proc part will start doing its job again. And of course it's screwed up <laughs> because of course it is. Also, why is the why are those solids at weird angles? That's odd. That's better. All right. Also, we're going to put the guidance down here so we never have to see it again. Sounds like a deal. Um, because it always resets because of the other fix made. Okay, so this is going to be down to four minutes. We want that'll raise our lift off thrust to weight ratio appropriately. Um, although really what we should do is put two LR-105s on that stage, I think. It's now, as you can see, quite an underpowered stage here. It's not, it's providing about half the delta V of the other stages. Um, Blowfish, they totally did. Um, that's partly why the LK LOK complex was s such a <laughs> such a pain, and why Alexei Leonov had to like literally climb out of the capsule and walk to the LK lander because they didn't have the mass budget for a docking port that you could walk through. Well, like travel through in any way, because they just didn't have the mass budget for it. I guess we'll go to four and a half minutes on it because we're okay. That makes more sense. Now let's look four one two seven plus two nine one one plus six four seven seven minus thirty two fifty. So we have a kilometer per second to spare. I should have just done this with lead ballast. Because then I would be able to see better. Okay, now let's calculate 4099 plus 2835 plus 5859. Minus 32.50. That's coming out about right, considering boil-off losses. Um, so let's put the fairing sides back on. I assume they're going to decouple in the correct. Mm. 
All right. RCS goes here so that it provides a little bit of knowledge first. Okay, so this is a reasonable launch vehicle. Tran Translunar launch vehicle. Let's see what we're chucking. We are chucking three tons TLI. That should be enough for a sample return mission. That should totally be enough for a sample return mission. Yeah, Venus and Mars are broadly in the same class. Uh, and then everything else is rather more expensive. Although Mercury, you can sometimes get like a four and a half kilometer per second window, but you'd better hope <laughs> you're going to do a flyby. You're not going to insert in that kind of window. Um, all right, so you know what? Let's go ahead and save this as a subassembly. I have been lax in making subassemblies for these things. No idea what the launch profile is going to be, but I'll figure it out in practice. Um, Okay. Sample return mission. Let's see if we can do a sample return mission on um, on next to nothing. Uh, I think those instruments weigh effectively nothing. Kilogram each. All right, it matters, but not enough to really prejudice anything. So, we still haven't actually unlocked landing yet. I feel silly that we've we've been doing all this without landing legs. There should be some serious penalty for trying to do this without landing legs. Uh, NTO and MMH. That is... Oh, that's TL1. Let's fix that. TL2. Um, thermo. Heat shield. That's a decoupler, but I think it decouples itself, not below it. Uh, I guess to really save mass, we could just come in <laughs> and not even have a decoupler and just um, let the fire burn off the... Oh, that's not, that's kg. That's lying. That's not 0 0.01 grams. That's 0 0.01 ton or something. Yeah, okay. This, I guess, needs to be a filled cylinder. Whoa, that's big. Um... Okay, what kind of delta V are we getting on this puppy?
Okay, 860 nanometers. That's enough for TEI. Well, it's a little short of TEI. So we'll have to do a little bit from the ascent stage. All right. Now we need uh, broadly this, I guess, um, except we actually do need the avionics all the way up, which is tragic. We might want to, we might have to do this um, LOR, but we'll see. Um, Okay. One, two, three, four. Hmm. I guess we need the Agena avionics here. because that's actually not appreciably heavier than three of... That's uh, four and a little bit of those probe cores. And so, rather than going to four of them, we're just going to put the avionics unit here. Man, I really should use proc avionics for this, shouldn't I? Um, but I can't afford at this point to... I think I can't afford the unlock costs. Uh, where did the GUI end up? Oh, it's over here. Okay. Upper stage. Yeah, um, I don't want to spend the money. <laughs> Sorry. It's an awesome thing, but I don't want to spend the money. Um... Also, I don't think we need this much ablator. No, we can't really game the system that way. Because I want, I want that to be enough for TEI, but it's just not going to be. So we'll have to slightly over budget. Um, why not an AJ-10 for this stage, says Lou Diamond. Um, because is the delta v appreciably wait is the is the specific, what's the specific impulse on these things? Um, two sixty one. No, we can two eighty two eighty one. That's definitely better than. That's definitely better than um, anything we can get out of an AJ ten at this point. Where are our AJ-10s, actually? AJ-10 mid. Let's look. Uh, 
yeah, I can't afford... I, I, I lack tech for that. Um, where's... And... We don't have access to the trans stage, AJ-10, which is the 138, I think. So, yeah, I think... What is the thrust away ratio of, the, of this thing? It's 90 kilos for 35. These things are 15, so 1 sixth for 2.5. What is their thrust? Oh, only 1.78. Okay. Less than 2. Um, yeah, so the thrust weight ratio isn't as good, but their specific impulse is rather higher. And because of the weight of this, that's going to matter more, I think. Um, let's see. I think we want to do about like this, because this gives us 2778. What is that in moon thrust to weight ratio? 2.47 to 7.29. It's acceptable. Um, we might put a fifth one on. And we might also put on some heftier RCS. Uh, I think we want these. This is... This is getting heavy fast. Um, we might still not quite be able to do a sample return mission annoying to me. Um, whoa, that's interesting. Why is that cocked like that? Anyway. Um, so that'll give us a uh, terminal landing. That will give us terminal landing and ascent. Okay, that's a nice stable base, it looks like. Okay. And... So now we need... how much to land? Um... So we are at twenty eight hundred. So we have four hundred spare. So we want 2,000 plus 750. So we need another 2,750 meters per second, delta V. Um, and I think the way we're going to have to probably have to do this is with one of these puppies. What is its specific impulse? 291. Yeah, so that's what we're going to have to do. Um, 
All right. So we need this. Where is stock like that? Get rid of that. Get rid of that. This we're going to go with balloon because we desperately need to save mass anywhere we can. Okay, and one of these. Let's get rid of the mount. And how can I hide fairing? I guess it doesn't show up until you actually place something on it, and then you can choose to hide fairing. Alright, so yeah. Yeah, we're kind of cooked. Alright, now. Crossfeed is not enabled there, that's correct. And it should not be enabled here. How much did I say we needed? We needed 2750. Why is that changing the delta V of this? That's confusing to me. That's seriously confusing. Why on earth is Mechjeb thinking that that changes the delta V of the stage above us? Oh, I bet because the decoupler... Yeah, the decoupler's in the wrong stage. That's why. Heh. Okay. That explains things. Now that the decoupler is... Oh, I put it... I still put it in the wrong stage. Now it's in the right stage. All right, let's try to shrink the terminal landing stage a bit and get more out of the Agena. So we need 6501. That's borderline acceptable for ascent, but not enough for terminal landing and ascent. So... Alright, I think that's going to work okay. Let's go for an even 40, 4 minutes 45. Alright, so this needs to... Get a little bit wider. Uh, any particular reason the nodes decided to stop working? <laughs> I have no idea. Proc parts are weird, man. Uh, gold 
foil. Another cylinder. Balloon. Fill it on down. Extend it out. Put this thing under it. Sixty five oh one, I said, did I not? Let's go with that. All right, so that's kind of a problem because we can chuck three tons TLI. We certainly can't chuck five and a quarter tons TLI. But what we can do is use this to finish TLI as well as do some other things. So that's what I'm going to look at next. Um, oh, we have a subassembly. What am I doing? I don't have to do my merge trick again. Subassemblies. Okay, so we need 6501 plus 3250 plus 9400. 19151. So we're a kilometer per second short. Let's see what happens if we stretch this stage. See if our delta V goes up. No, we plateau. That's the most we can get. Right there. Dang. I really did not want to have to do an LOR mission for this. Lunar sample return is non-trivial. Um, well, we know what we have to do now. Oh, I already had a, I already had that sitting as next to it. I didn't have to do that. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. Um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to prioritize miniaturization because that'll give us the Ranger Block 3 core and that should just make things possible maybe. Um, that or I just invest the money in proc avionics and do it that way. Um, I mean there is one other option. There is one other option. Um, And the other option is to make this right here hydrolox. Could probably cut it down to three tons if we did that. But we'd have to worry about boil off and it still wouldn't solve our problem. So what I might well have to do for this is just bite the bullet and make a hydrolox second stage for this launch vehicle using like four RL10s. Um, and that would probably get us four to five tons TLI. So, yeah, that's and that's going to be fiendishly expensive. We're already up to $18 million. That'll probably pump it up to 25 or 30. But them's the brakes. I mean, the other thing we could do, you just check here. 
I mean, we could make this actually use balloon tanks like the actual Centaur, and that could that might push our. If I did that and put a Hydrolox upper in there, we could probably throw six tons to the moon. Um. Oh, Blowfish Pro, you're entirely right. I forgot all about that. That is obviously what we should do. Where is it? There it is. $75 million. Well, that's shockingly expensive. Uh, the one downside of it is that its thrust is... What is that? That's... 150,000 pound force. Um, so that's really an overpowered second stage for this launch vehicle. Um, what might get done uh, oh, that's the sea level one. The vacuum one is um, 694 kilonewtons. Uh, what are the rated burn times? Okay, 480 seconds. Oh no, that's the vacuum upgrade. Sustainer upgrade. Titan C. 300 seconds or 360 seconds. So what we might have to do actually is use it as a sustainer with E1 boosters. And that's going to be ridiculously expensive. But, um... It's probably what we'll have to do. Uh, let me think about this. One of those puppies. Uh, hang on. It's about double the thrust of an LR-105. And I was thinking about putting two of them in there. So we might get away with a single one. It might have a shorter than than advantageous burn time. So a sustainer is so think of the space shuttle. Okay, the space shuttle has these boosters on the side and then it has this core in the center and the core burns from launch all the way into orbit basically for the space shuttle. I mean into like a what, like a 250 by 50 quote-unquote orbit, and the OMS will actually push it. Um, sustainer is basically an engine that's good from the ground through vacuum. A bit better at vacuum than ground. Um, like the, the middle engine on Atlas, or the middle engine on an R7, or aka uh, Molnia, aka Soyuz, aka whatever, you know, the traditional some Yorka booster. Um, Alright, so we just built Dalmatian and now we're going to build Mega Dalmatian or something along those lines. Um, so here we go. 4.57 is the size. Well, at least we can go ahead and hide this thing. Um, Four point five seven. Okay, that goes there. That goes there. This should come out to four, I think, and this comes out to four point five seven. And the LR eighty seven is criminally un underutilized, so I think I'm going to use it regardless of whether I need it in this instance. So let's go ahead and unlock it. That was expensive. Um, and we're going to need... we're going to need some... well, I guess we can roll with that. Uh, this now is Soyuz Green. Uh, 
This goes away. This goes in its place. Thank you, Lack, for making that engine for me. That now goes up to there, and this becomes cryogenic orange. Okay. Oh, where did the retros go? They get trapped inside this contraption. Yes, they did. <laughs> okay. Uh, there we go. Oh, I might have actually never fixed the extra height on that, so I'll have to fix that later. So, let's redo this. Remove, replace with this. I trust it's going to be the last one on the list. Alright, and we're also going to have to pack... Um, some hydrazine for roll control. Where's the big old thrusters? There's the big old thrusters. Because this thing is a single engine, so we'll be without roll control. TL2 hydrazine. these down. Sorry this turned into a more of a build episode than a fly episode. I know people generally like watching the fly episodes better, but um how much hydrazine is that gonna be? And does that still have... Yes, it does still have hydrogen. All right, let's put this back on here. Let's... How much hydrogen is that? 41 liters. That's probably enough for roll control. Hey, Bill. Um, not a long burn time. Still not the world's largest burn time. We should be able to get five minutes out of it. Okay, now let's go ahead and put this on it. And our thrust to weight ratio is horrific. That's what I was afraid of. So we'll have to go down to four minutes. Oh, this didn't actually make it as expensive as I feared. Well, let's make it more expensive then. Well, that's only a million more expensive. Well, that gave us most of the Delta V we need. Four point five. There we are. A little extra height. Okay. Okay. That's still a quite a poor lift off thrust to weight ratio. but I think it will just barely be acceptable for us. Let's check staging. Okay. 
So we need... Oh, right. And we also need to um, start playing around with this, see what changes our delta V. So that's maximal, right there. So we need 6501 plus 9450 plus 3200 is 19151. We're hilariously close. We're only about 300 meters per second short. Oh, that's annoying that we're so close and yet so far. Where is that other fairing side anyway? There it is. Uh, and that's not even counting the fairings yet. Although they won't materially affect anything. Uh, especially if they're in that stage. Yeah, 10 meters per second loss. Blowfish is right. I think the I think the config that we care about doesn't. Yeah, it's not unlocked yet. Um, <laughs> I'm like half tempted to put an H1 between the two E ones, <laughs> um, and then stretch the core a little bit, <laughs> but that's really kind of cheating. We haven't made these balloon yet. Oops, that's... And... That didn't really change anything, did it? I'm going to keep this as default anyway, because... Um, so there's more more mass going on. Um, all right. So I want to know what happens if I make this balloon. That's what we needed. I kind of didn't want to exactly replicate Centaur, but it appears that that's what we're going to have to do. Alright, and now I need to shrink this. Well, actually, we can vary it with utilization. Where's 50? That's close enough. Now, this is 8125.8 blocks. Okay. Now, let's see what our delta V is at optimal boil off. Well, actually, no, we already have enough delta V. So, yeah, I had to exactly replicate Centaur, it looks like. <laughs> but that's okay, it happens. Um, I mean, yeah, because <laughs> the reason Centaur is the way it is, at least in terms of balloon tanks, is because balloon tanks are more efficient. They're just way the heck more expensive. Um, let's play with this tank, too. Well, that's making a big old difference. Wait a minute. Shoot. We can't do that. We have to do it that way. We'll lose a little delta V, but we need more delta V in there. 
to go with 2 minutes and 20 seconds. All right, so 862. So we need to subtract, say, 100, so 2410. Let's say it's actually 2310. That's cutting it a bit tight for a cent, but it's what we'll have to do. Thirty-one thirty-six minus eight hundred is twenty-three thirty-six, which should just be enough for retrofire, but we're gonna stretch it out a little bit more to two minutes and thirty seconds. Just to be careful. Now let's look at the way up. Thirty-eight oh two plus thirty-eight seventy plus forty-nine twenty-five minus let's say ninety-four hundred is just about right for TLI. So yes, this is just barely within our current capabilities, but who boy, that's really pushing it. We do not have much of a margin, that's for sure. What I might do is actually under propellant this down to here, because look at how little that changed our delta V. So we're at 19,236. Now we're at 19,178, so that, 176, so that's 24 plus 36. Yeah. 60 meters per second. I think we'll gain that back in lowered gravity losses from doing that. So yeah. So this is basically half a Saturn one. Well, it gets a bit fuzzy because our upper stage here is actually not that far off. It's actually probably about equivalent performance to S4. We just have a much smaller booster under it. Mm. That, you're right, that might give a little tiny bit of room to stretch the second stage, but, like... Also, we need some actual serious business ullage motors. That's not going to cut it. that took us down another 7 meters per second, but that will at least give us... that tripled our ullage acceleration. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to stretch the second stage anymore because... Um, actually, I think we have excess capacity, because I was thinking of a long burning we don't need 9400, we're only going to need about 9300 because 2 minute 40 and 4 minutes and probably 2 minutes on that is not going to be that bad. We're only going to need 1500 meters per second on the on the Centaur. Maybe 1800, that won't take that long to burn. So yeah, I think this will work fine. Uh, I would dearly love to have a pair of M55s, but we haven't even researched casters, so we're not going to get M55s for a bit. Now, if, you're, if you wonder at all about the power of Hydrolox, this launch vehicle masses less than the launch vehicle that threw Luna 2 at the moon. And Luna 2 was only like a few hundred kilograms. Whereas we're chucking um, about five tons. That is the power of Hydrolox. And as you were discussing before in chat, and I was discussing, well, that is why 
the Soviets ran into such problems with high energy missions because they didn't have hydrolocks. Um, and you just you you have to have a much much larger launch vehicle when you only have carolocks. You can't, when you don't have hydrolock uppers. All right, so I'm going to cringe at this cost, but we're going to build one. It also means that um, we can very easily send lunar orbital missions. Um, PAP, I'm pretty sure it is, but let's find out. Oh, I also have to research these engines, so that's further investment. But it's investment that I would have to make anyway. Because I'm definitely going to be using these engines. It's not like I'm not going to be using these engines. Um, yeah, I'd like the LR87 LH2 vacuum, but it's not. It's certainly not gonna. <laughs> it's certainly not gonna justify the part unlocks, but um, like like with the R and D, it's something we'll have to do anyway later. So we might as well do it now. Um, all right, that's the roll control. Um, oh, right, that is the one other thing to do. Oh, why did they get? Why did their position get messy? That's weird. Whatever. We'll fix it. Oh, because we shrunk the stage, that's why. Man, I'm so glad I made RCS stageable. Makes things much better. Um, show activation toggles. Only enroll. Because we have gimbals for everything else. Uh, it'd be nice if we could gimbal the turbo pump exhaust and then have roll control. But we can't. Unless I put another thrust transform there, which I guess I could do. Um, but you have to put a second engine, too. All right. How tall is this thing? 46.5 meters. That's not bad. So yeah, let's go ahead and build Selene 9. Yes, the fact that we're doing lunar sample return on effectively 1961 technology is maybe 1962, because the E1s are really slightly more advanced than that. We probably should not have the E1s unlock until the next node. That should be, Pap, in the tree, now that we have more rocketry nodes, we can push the E1s a node past the H1s. Um, let me look at what exactly I'm getting for this contract. Active lunar sample return. Hmm? No, it actually... Completion will pay for all those unlocks and the build, I think. Pap, you're awesome. I, I assume H1 is in like 1961 now, and then Saturn 1 H1 is in like 1964. Uh, you didn't see my thumbs up, but there was a thumbs up, because you're awesome. Um, yeah, we should be all good. Okay, now let's actually do the launch. Now that it's been like an hour and 18 minutes, um, the launch that has nothing to do with what we just built, but that's how it works. Um, so yeah, we'll watch our money decrease quite a lot. Tech, how are we doing on tech? Electrics will finally give us extendable solar panels. Uh, we've been waiting for that quite a bit. Uh, and that will make <laughs> things other than Eagle 5 and 6 much more workable. 111 days to build that thing. Wow. We need more build rate. But happily, once we complete this, sat this contract, we should get a lot of money. Uh, I'm going to make this day launch because I like to be able to see what's going on. I'm going to save 
in case something goes horrifically wrong, as it seems to frequently. Um, <laughs> Pap, you should probably focus on your test. This will be on YouTube. It'll be fine. C++ is fun, though. Um, good luck with the test. Everybody should wish, wish Pap a lot of good luck with that test. Pap, nope, that sounds awesome. Th that timing sounds just perfect. The H1 Saturn 1B might get pushed back a little bit because I think the delay for Saturn 1B was um, S4B. But basically it sounds perfect. All right, now let me guess at a launch profile because we haven't launched this before. Pap, yeah, I'm guessing that the the pacing item for the for Saturn 1B was the S4B, and that the upgraded H1s were available fairly earlier. They might be more like 65, maybe even 64. No, I think there were there were different upgraded ones in 63. So then 64 or 5 would be right for what we call the H1 Saturn 1B. Uh, okie dokie. Let's look at 12 G's at burnout. Well, that's impressive. Because uh, we have this long burning core. Oh, and these are the... Right. These aren't H1s. These are LR79 and A13s. Which are were made to be used with solid boosters, but in our case we just have a long burning core. But we can't throttle, so oh well. Um... I think we want something like this. That would be my guess. Oh. Um, we'll have steering losses that we won't like, but I don't really see a way around that one. If necessary, what we'll do is we'll insert into an orbit that's slightly lower than GEO and then we'll raise perigee event. We'll raise apogee to, to GEO and then we'll raise perigee if we find that we don't quite have the delta V that we need. Um, right. No, actually I think I do want this 40 after all. And we're going for a low parking orbit. I might have to vary things a little bit. Six oh eight. Well, here goes. Let's see how it works. That's slow off the pad. But hey, it'll be fine. Yeah, we have we have a lot of data on these things. I say that, and obviously I love Jinx myself, but it's interesting. This looks like a Titan Three Agena B, or um, or Titan Two Agena B, which I don't think was actually ever launched. Um, yeah, I don't like that issue in smoke screen, so we'll look like that, and then they go away. Um, Yeah, this does really kind of look like a Titan Agena. Okay, I'm going to have to 
tweak the ascent profile a little bit due to just how high G we're going to be by the end of it. Let's pitch down a little bit here. Before we're going too fast. We'll stay in line with the velocity vector broadly. Ah, Blowfish, but you're missing that there's only one stage. <laughs> That's why it's funny. <laughs> I mean, there's the, there's the, the Bengal up top, but this is all one stage. <laughs> That's why it's funny. That's why I'm having to manage this ascent carefully. It looks like it should be two stages, and it would make sense for Titan because Titan was like two minutes and 30 seconds, or even two minutes 15, I think, for Titan 1. And then uh, a three minute upper. And that would be about the same length as what we have here. I think Titan 2 would have been a little bit longer than what we have here. Yes, this is indeed a ridiculous early e unboosted EELV. Our gravity losses are going to be hilarious. Even given the fact that we had a 1.15 Lift off thrust weight ratio, our gravities our gravity losses are gonna be pretty low. Let's pitch down some more. Pitch down some more. Pitch down some more. build up some steering losses, but there's not much we can do about that. Okay. Hey, look at the plume that Tyson fixed. Thank you, Tyson. Tyson? Tyson? Jason, however it's pronounced, however it is pronounced, we are grateful to you. Look at those gravity losses, despite our lift off thrust weight ratio. Yeah, this is a geostationary comp set. You do some quick calculations, 2300. Yes, we're going to have plenty of delta V. I was worried about our delta V, but we're going to have plenty of delta V. Actually, no, I think I don't want to do that. Because we're not going to be burning for all that long. Probably we're going to actually have to pitch down a little bit. Oh wait, we have we have many many relights. So who cares? We don't have to do this in one burn.
Yeah, we're going to have about 400 meters per second extra. That's nice. Let's pitch down a little bit just to control things. Got to trade steering losses for gravity losses. I think we want about 200, so we have stuff to deal with. That's fine. Now, helpfully, our apogee is going to be right about right and we're actually going to yeah we can circularize at apogee and then do another burn to GEO uh, because we have 15 relights on this thing well now we have we had 15 ignitions uh, and let's activate this before I forget target the earth all right so we will not have as much delta V to spare as I hoped but it's fine yeah pap let 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 us not interfere with your <laughs> with with your doing that stuff I, I didn't realize you were taking a test at the time. Come on, finish pitching. Let's see. All right. Okay. Gonna execute this maneuver. And we don't have to worry about ology on this thing. Short burn. Could almost do it on hydrazine. But well, 100 meters per second is not something we would do on hydrazine. 10 is something we'd do on hydrazine. Perfect. Now, do the kick. Um, change apogee at the DN. Okay. Twenty-four fifty-one. We have twenty-eight seventy. Let's. do some plane changing work. Um, what's going on here? There we are. 36, so that's too much. It's not enough. about right. And that still leaves... Well, let's just expend everything we have, because why not? It's about right. That's a little more than we have, actually. Very well.
Okay. Excellent. Okay, seven minutes to burn. Let's reorient. Bornholio, um, we were building Lunar Sample Return, but the next thing we had queued to fly was GEO uh, to complete our CompSat network. PAP, uh, okay, well, yeah, the, the tricky ones are tricky. That's how it works. How they get you. Okay. We still have plenty of hydrazine. We will execute the next node. Expending that hydrazine increased our delta V by one meter per second. That was interesting. Um, come on, line up. There we go. Why are we off? Why are we off alignment? That's interesting. Well, that's fine. We have enough hydrazine, we can afford some mech jeb attitude correction. Oh, yeah, we... Well, yeah, that might be... No, I think we're above the inverse rotation threshold here. I think inverse rotation threshold for Earth is only 140. But I might be wrong. Um, yeah, so we'll clean up on, hydra on hydrazine. Pretty plume is pretty. <laughs> Look at that inclination lower. We're not going to have a very expensive apogee kick which means most of it will be, most of the propellant and the probe will still be there. So, cool. Yeah, we cut 50%. We, we cut a third off our inclination. Oh, piss off, Mac Jeb. Let's flip all the way around. And now we have to... Oh, I guess while we're spinning, we'll go ahead and create our... Ah, whoops. Uh, we have to raise Apogee slightly. This is indeed the, the third ComSat. Uh, and yes, the answer to the question, how much Delta V does it take to land on safely, softly and safely on the moon, is um, it really does kind of depend. With suicide burn and a carefully tailored orbit, that starts low and ends just above the ground, uh, you might be able to do it on something like 1800. Um, well, I mean, check what your orbital speed is in a 30 by 5 orbit. And that's how much it takes. Uh, the way you do that 
Um, so the maneuver node orientation is in is in absolute. So if you're pointed at a maneuver node and you turn off persistent rotations thingies, so it looks like this, this is in green, and you're pointed at a maneuver node, you will always be pointed at the maneuver node. Um, if you turn SAS on, so persistent rotation keeps you fixed, um, you will always be pointed at the maneuver node no matter how long you warp. If you're pointed at the horizon, that is the time that you want to turn this on and turn SAS on, and that will keep you pointed at the horizon. But the maneuver node will appear to move. All right, now let's go ahead and set up our. We want to circularize at the next apogee, and we want to change inclination at the equatorial AN. Pap, yep, you're very welcome. That's why I always turn it off, because I like to orient for the maneuver node and then stay oriented to the maneuver node. Okay, 168.2 So one sixty eight point two. That should give us the orbit we desire. Yes, it does. Now, we're going to go ahead and align to that maneuver. Now, we are going to, oops, we came out of alignment slightly. All right. Come on, get aligned, you. All right, now we're going to spin up. Eh, we're not quite aligned at all. That's annoying. Why are we deviating so badly? And now we're going to go ahead and separate this. And now we're going to... Oh, is this out of juice? No, it's not out of juice. Okay. Now we'll let the stage go away from us. Why did we lose alignment with that thing? That was very annoying. All right, so this thing is on, I believe. Status operational. All right, and targeting the Earth. So let's go ahead and warp out to that maneuver. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to fire the solids once so that then we'll be controllable and then we'll keep going around this orbit until we are in approximately the right position.
Okay, 56 seconds. This only takes 6.4 seconds to go, so we'll wait until we're quite close. About like that. Okay. Man, I'm shocked that worked, because those solids do not have great reliability. Um, was there gimbling on which engine? Okay, we're going to despin. Except not quite, because we want the solar panel to actually be facing the sun. Whoops, I'm spinning the wrong way. That's great. Uh, and we want to advance this at least one orbit. Oh, no, except it took the... Shoot. Uh, we're going to have to recreate it. Alright, so we're going to have to recreate that maneuver. Um, which will involve circularize and inclination change at the equatorial N. Okay, so that's minus 29.8. Oops, we want circularize. So, 29.8, All right. And this gets whatever the normal thing was. All right, so that's good. So technically that engine was not shut down even, because RF just um, sets its thrust to zero when it's at zero throttle, and RF treats it as shut down, but it's not actually deactivated, because if you deactivate it, MechJeb stops counting the delta V. So that's why we don't deactivate them. Um, all right, so we want to be there, there, there. Let's see where we are in one orbit. We are too close to both of these things. Uh, I have a sinking suspicion that this is actually not going to work for this contract. But we'll have a GEO network at least. And we can launch something expensive later. Because these things are too near each other. This really needs to be over about here. Uh, that advanced. All right, let's go another orbit. That's interesting. We're, oh, right, because we're only an hour and 40 minutes. So, less than a twelfth of an orbit each time. Yeah, Blowfish, you're correct. I am going to burn a bit of this node. Um,
The only downside is it's not going to... We'll have to deal with it manually. Actually, what am I talking about? We don't actually have to worry about it. We'll just point at the thing. Because um, we can... We'll maintain a stable orientation. We know this is the direction to be pointed in. So... Because if I try to advance it another orbit, it will snap itself back to the full delta V, I believe. All right, this is going to be in three-hour chunks. All right. Yeah, let's see what happens if we advance in orbit. Yep, it went back to where it was. But that's fine. We just have to burn in the right direction. Oops. I don't know why SAS is misbehaving for me that it seems to be. All right, now we're quite close to the correct location. Um, yeah. I think there's something obnoxious in this contract that like all the satellites have to talk to each other which seems odd if they're a comm network and they just have to relay comms from a ground station back um, Pap did you intentionally put that requirement in? I'm just wondering what the, the deal was on that In fact, is it even possible for them at the altitude you're asking for them to all be in contact with each other? What is the required... Yeah, direct comms to Halo... Oh! It's a yeah, it's a chain. All right, that makes more sense. No, I think they. I don't know. I don't quite understand that. We'll we'll see what we can do. All right, I think three hours is going to be about right for phasing. Well, slightly less than three hours. All right. No, I want to warp to next maneuver. There we are. Uh, that moved too far. Dang. Well, happily, we...
We'll just fix it like this. We'll go a bit high. So that will advance. Yeah, so we need to go a bit high. Whoops. Our inclination we can no longer fix. Let's go to prograde. And let's burn radial to correct that. Prograde. Okay, we are now going to fall behind slightly. So what does the COM network not like? Direct connection to Halo 2. All right, well, let's futz it like this then. Let's target Halo 2. Let's miss all the targeting stations. Where's Halo 2? But I do have a direct connection to Halo 2. That's weird. Shouldn't we? I think we should. Oh, apparently not. Okay. Oh, no, I know it's... Halo 2 is not looking at me, and I think if I make Halo 2 look at me, it will lose its Earth connection because it doesn't have an Omni. So I think we might just, just have bricked that satellite. Well, that's tragic. Uh, yeah. Pretty sure if we if we redirect this at, at Halo 3, they'll talk to each other, but there's nothing else in the network. So we'll be screwed. So I guess we have to launch a fourth satellite that can talk to KSC and then talks to Halo 2. All right, well, that's fine. We need to test those Hydrolox engines before we fly the sample return mission anyway. I do not have a Communitron 16 on any of these things. I was just building commsats that would help during launches due to the, the cone. Um, Oh, ha, 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 ha. I just had an idea. Um, cheeky, but it should work. Right, what's our delta V? And what is the required periapsis here? That's weird. Oh, because of the eccentricity requirement. That's why.
Okay, this makes sense now. Yeah, it is a standard remote tech contract, but RP0 not being remote tech, I don't understand the requirement for comms with the other vessels rather than just comms with Earth. Yeah, Pap, I would I would question whether it makes sense to require direct comms to the other vessels if they've got a good ground link. Um, but anyway, uh, I think we can make this work. Let's see how much delta V we actually have. We've used almost none of this hydrazine, but tragically, it's hydrazine, not. MMH and NTO. Uh, so let's calculate it out. What is the specific impulse of this thing? It is... Oh, it doesn't... 198. So... And we mass 196. So, oops. Alright, so I'm gonna get the empty mass and then the full mass here. So we're at 196. The empty mass is 123. Okay. Let's calculate the delta V. Take the natural log times 9.80665 times 198. 904. Pap, yeah, exactly. We what we all we care about is the percent coverage of Earth. Basically. Um, but I'm going to try to actually complete this mission without exchanging the contract because that would be kind of silly. And also, I'm not sure you can change a contract that's in progress like that. Um, so we have 904. Let's look at what a Let's look at how much that would cost. Ugh. All right. If we have 904, that means 450 Oh. No, I'm an idiot. Uh, I am an idiot. We just need to change our orbital period such that we're on the opposite side of Earth. Well, close to it. So Halo 3 is going to fall back slightly. So I think we can just wait. Yes, I think we can just wait. Although it will be many days before it will be the case. Um, however, how long until this is done? 24 days until that, and 47 days until that. So I think we can just watch it and wait and see what happens. Uh, apparently we're spinning. Well, let's... Why are we still spinning? I killed our rotation. That's weird that we're still spinning, but whatever. I don't understand these things, but we're spinning in a productive direction. So let's wait 
as we slowly fall back. Yeah, we're spinning a different direction each time. That's really kind of weird. But whatever. Persistent rotation is weird. Alright, we're gradually falling backwards. We could help this process along by expanding delta V on Halo 2 as well, but I really don't want to. It's only been five days. Getting there. Earth is almost in the cone. Yeah, some ground stations should be in the cone now, actually. I'm not really sure why that is. Because, see, look, that cone is going through the Earth. Uh, but there might not actually be anything of use there. Let's focus on the Earth. And, no, there are ground stations there. And our cone is intersecting them. So I don't really understand why we're not getting comms. That's very confusing to me. Because these stations right here should be within the cone. Especially since that's Goldstone. I guess it's still under the horizon from us? Alright. Also, where's the cone now? Why is it not showing our cone? Wait, because now we're dead of electric charge, even though we were spinning before. Okay, this is just ridiculously buggy at the moment. So I'm going to give it back some electric charge. Because the whole point of it being spinning was that it would spin with the solar panels. Oh, it is actually spinning still. So let's wait and get some electric charge this way. Okay, now we have comms, now we have everything, everything is good. So, we don't have a direct connection to Halo 2 yet, but we now can make one, I believe. So let's make that happen. That was an interesting lesson in orbital mechanics and ground stations, um, and how remote tech works. Uh, comms. Let's target Halo 3. Huh? Great. Now this doesn't have a... That's weird. Now it's no longer ComSat 2. Because it no longer has a direct connection to Halo 1. Alright, fine. So you know what we're going to do? Um, I 
is Halo 3. We're going to essentially line them up. I mean, yes, obviously I could fix this by launching things with the appropriate antennas, but we can fix this a different way. Wait, did we lose ground station again? Or did we lose electric charge? What is what is going on here? Why do we have zero electric charge when we're generating more than we're consuming? That puzzles me. There we are. Now it's working. Although oddly it's only working in warp. That makes literally no sense to me. That is an interesting book. This is this is a hilariously buggy expedition today. All right, let's go ahead and quickly target the Earth so we don't have that problem again. All right. Now, what we need to do is we need to line this up with one of another. Basically, we need to perform a rendezvous. We need to perform a Hohmann transfer to Halo 2. Set as target. Create node. No, it does not cost 327 meters per second to do that. But it does tell us that it's going to happen in 34 days. Um, but what we can do, meanwhile, is we can spend a bit more delta V and increase our phasing orbit. And then it will not take quite as long. Okay, now it should be more like 12 days. Seven days. Excellent. And look at how cheap that is. All right, so we're going to execute that node. Although we are going to first line up with the sun. So that we don't run out of electric charge again as we clearly have. Ninety-six, ninety-six. All right, that should result in gaining electric charge, and yet for some reason we're not. I have no idea why we're not, because that's generating more than we're consuming. Uh, in convention arcing, yes, you're right. To make the contract work as intended, you, you probably do need three directional antennas. But I don't want to relaunch all three. Oh, Bornholio, you're absolutely right. That's what's, that's what's going on. It's my avionics go out of hibernation when I go out of warp. That is not a bug. That's okay. That makes much more sense. Um, we probably should write some code so they automatically hibernate when you run out of electric charge so that it can wake up from this kind of situation. But I guess that happens just if you go into warp. So it's fine. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and warp until that home and transfer. One day left, 21 hours. All right. What's our separation at closest approach going to be? 128.2 kilometers. That's close enough that our omnis will reach. <laughs> you 
Yes, Bill, this is this is <laughs> how to unbrick your phone KSP style. <laughs> this this took a lot of fancy footwork. But um Yeah, we don't need perfect separation because we only need to be in antenna range of that other satellite. Pap, no, 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 so this is all because I didn't fully understand the contract when I launched these things. And had I actually put the Omni antennas I was supposed to put on them on them, none of this would be happening. But uh, I think it's nonetheless an interesting stream because it, um, it's all about problem solving. All right, that's the local minima. Local minimum, I guess. Um, okay, so let's reorient such that we actually get electric charge on things. Oops, wrong way. Close enough. We should still be gaining. Yep. All right, that's all I care about. Now let's match at closest approach. And warp to that. Frankly, once we get close enough, um, the contract should complete. But. Um, we may be too far away still. So let's Oh, because our eccentricity isn't good. So that'll once we align it closest approach. Man, still faster than a KSP orbit. Okay, excellent. Wait, Earth communications coverage is 0% out of 60%? That can't be right. How is it zero? We're covering literally like 90% of the Earth. That's weird. Does anyone in chat understand how coverage is calculated? Because we should have darn good coverage. Does it not take dishes into account? Does it not take the the root model into account? What's what's going on there? All right. Well, let's um let's orient for um
Let's see. What's up with the sun? This is the way we want to move for the sun. So that we can get well above 50. Alright. That's looking good. Alright. So we apparently have to wait two days. Um, how long until that tech unlocks? Six days. So that's fine. We can wait two days. Okay. What? Okay. Earth communications coverage. Oh. We. Crap. We got too far from. I guess we didn't match the orbits carefully enough. Seventy one days. Uh, we need to get a shorter period. <sighs> All right. Oh, yeah, our period was two minutes too long. I sh yeah, I should have fixed our period after we matched velocities, but I assumed that matching velocities would be enough. All right. So let's get closer. And then we'll fall back down again, I think. No, I actually adjusted our period too much. <laughs> All right, well, happily, we actually have a bunch of delta V in this thing. So. We want, that should be about right, 57. Except for the fact that our solar panels are now not doing any good. That's fixed. All right. Okay, now we'll fall back into range. Or at least we should. Yeah. Okay. Are we in range again? Yes. No? No. Okay. How far? Set distance 562 meters. Uh, kilometers. All right. So we need to fall back even further. The distance seems to be further now. That can't be right. We're over a thousand kilometers away? That's weird. Also, we should be moving backwards com with compared to it. And we're not. Oh, but we're near periapsis, I guess. That's what's going on. Yeah. Okay. 
now we're quite close. So now we adjust the period to hold steady. Well, roughly steady. One sixty six away. What's going on? What we have to fix our eccentricity. Um Oh, part of the problem is our planes aren't matched either. Yeah, our inclination is kind of screwy right now. What is its altitude anyway? 35804. Alright, so we can circularize here. Kill off some of our vertical velocity. Okay. We're two seconds short, which means we'll start going forward, which means we want to do that. And we still have plenty of sun. So that's good. Now we want to match planes with target. All right. We have to do the shakeout thing again. Okay. In 22 hours. Let's warp to that node. This is dragging on. Whoa, I've been doing this a long time. I need to stop and eat supper. But I think we're, we've almost solved this problem. a line like that. Okay. And what is its apogee? Thirty-five, eight, sixteen. So we're actually just about aligned perfectly. We just need that. We also need some sun. Okay. 
27 watts, 27 watts, is that going up or down? It's going up, good. Now let's finish the shakeout, which will take another day. What is its distance? Its distance should be decreasing steadily. No, nope, now it's increasing. As long as it stays below 200, that's all I care about. We should technically be... Um, it should catch up to us, because we have a two second longer period. It'll just take a long time for it to catch up to us. Why are the coverage numbers not working properly. The, there's some, there must be some bug in the coverage calculations because these things have like about 80% of Earth covered. So I'm not sure in what universe this counts as 0% Earth coverage, when between that satellite and this satellite, the only... So we'll miss about maybe 5% of Earth's surface area at each pole, so that's 10%, and then... No, we'll miss like 2%, so that's 4%, and then over here we'll miss like a little slice here, which is probably about 5%. So we should have about 90% coverage. So I'm going to save right now. And my other competitors can make me reload the save if they want. But with chat's permission, I'm just going to complete that contract because that should be like 80% coverage. And for some reason, it's reporting as 3% coverage. Uh, so I'm really confused what's going on there. So we're just going to go ahead and complete it. Okay. Oops, Pap said go back to the Space Center before you complete this. All right. Let me go ahead and load it and then go back to the Space Center. Where's Beth complete? There we are. Before complete. That was super confusing. Yeah, still shows 5%. Alright, so we're going to go back to the Space Center. Uh, perhaps that it might click over to the proper percent of coverage. So let's see what happens. Oh, you know what it might be? It might be that it doesn't understand how long range our ground stations actually are. Yeah, it's still at 5%. Alright. And we'll, f before anybody else runs that mission in Race into Space, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll touch up the contract and figure out what was going on wrong there. Um, yeah. So, I don't, I don't know what was up with that. But, anyway, we did that. Um, and I really got to go. And the dishes are like 50 gigameter dishes. So, yeah. Like anything with a with even a few hundred kilometer omni <laughs> in low Earth orbit is going to have comms from them, so that's fine. Um, so 
let's get rid of this and let's launch Halo 3 and Yeah, I agree. That's why I completed the contract. Because <laughs> it really should. Um, so what we need to do is we need to fall back. Um about 120 degrees. 120 degrees is a third which is eight hours so if we increase our period by an hour it will take eight days. Well eight orbits. Um, so let's do that and then I will go away and eat my supper given that it's super late. All right, close enough. Now let's just make sure we have good solar panel coverage. Ah, uh, that's not sufficient. Locked means uh, pitch up. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Now we want to circularize at an altitude of thirty five seven eighty. What do you mean it does not reach it? Oh! Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. So we'll do it that way. And now we need to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll do it after seven days. And we'll set an alarm. And we'll go back to Space Center. All right, thank you everybody for watching. I'm sorry that went on forever. I'm sorry there were lots of issues. But we now, Pap and I know we have to look into, and Pap, I'll look into the code of how that actually detects coverage and we'll, I'll see what's up with that. Because there's something fishy with how that's detecting coverage. Um, Because, yeah, so what is this? Start 23, I think. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.